Woo. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> uh, man, I'm thrilled. This came in earlier than it was supposed to because times are actually getting better. Woo. So, this is the Huxworks HX QD. Woo. This is not the K 3D printed suppressors. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Looking nice. Looking crispy and fresh. So look at that. Oh, man. So, this is a flow-through suppressor. I don't actually remember off the top of my head what it's made of. Got this nice little Huxwork Safety Co. sticker. That's nice. And then this is a 556 dedicated suppressor. Um, I mean, yeah, technically it'll do anything under that. So it comes with a 556 muzzle device. Uh, like most companies, I'm pretty sure this is the flash hider. And then on 30 cals, I believe it typically comes with the muzzle brake. Let's see, timing is not required. Hey, Amen. That, that's great. I mean, I'm fine with timing, but it's a lot easier. Oh, hey, that's good to know. About 33 foot-pounds, or if you don't have a torque wrench, about a 20-degree rotation after hand tight. That's nice that they add that. That's pretty cool. So, this is the standard muzzle device. It is not the one that has the little extension that comes out to help with, uh, like, a 13.9 barrel length to get you to that overall of 16. The cool thing that I like about Huxworks, uh, a couple companies do this, but not all. They include a hole on the muzzle device if you're going to pin and weld. So that way you've already got the hole. You can use it to help you get going. So I just want to do a quick unboxing. And then I'm going to show you how to actually install this, especially since it doesn't need timing. It's even better. And that's awesome. Let's see if they actually include anything good in their instructions. So the cleaning and maintenance part is probably going to be the, the best part for anyone to look at. That's going to be very important. Every suppressor is going to be different. For example, this one doesn't come apart. Uh, it is what it is. And they, I believe for these ones, it's cleaned by submersion. Uh, some you can take the baffles out, you can clean them individually, but that's how this one works. Um, now let's talk about this flash hider real quick. It's interesting, right? It's not a bird cage. Um, it's, a, it's a twist on a bird cage, literal twist. Ah. Um, but I actually really like that because it ends up sending those gases around. So that's about half the suppressor. It's right about there. Typically, muzzle brakes are really good for suppressors because they act as another set of baffles. Right, even though this isn't a baffled can. So it, it's kind of just, it, it's really cool how they do it, and it works really well with how they build their suppressors. So the whole system works really well. And that is why I'll be using this instead of getting, uh, I believe these fit on Xeno mounts and Chemo mounts, I think. I think the threading will fit on there. We're going to go ahead and get this thing installed. This is the guy it's going on. Uh, yes, there's already a bit of stuff here. So, we just want to take this guy off. If you don't have one of these, it is an armorer's wrench. This one is from Wheeler. Uh, they are rather affordable. And if you're going to be doing anything, anything, anything with rifles... I would recommend getting one. Magpul also makes a good one. I'll kind of switch between these based on what I'm doing. I will say, for taking these things off, you may not actually be able to get it off as easily as you might think. Um, there's a big reason for that. If you bought a pre-built gun, it might have red Loctite on the threads. Uh, if you've shot it a ton, look at that. That was just from me 
setting this down and picking it up. That's carbon from inside here. So you can carbon lock the threads. It might take some muscle. You just got to get it down. Uh, if you can't, well, you can call someone, get some muscles. But the important thing is you're using a vise. You're using a vise block of some kind. This one, I took the upper off. This vice block is also a Wheeler Delta series. There's also the Magpul Bev block. There's also these sorts of deals that clamp around your upper, and then you vice that in. There's another one, I believe it's called the Geisley Reaction Rod or something like that. With this muzzle device, we won't need shims because we don't have to time it, unlike the traditional birdcage. So, there is one thing we want to do though, and that would be if you have uh, acetone, you see, you can put that on your threads and kind of wipe it off a little bit. I do not have acetone, but I do have 99% isopropyl alcohol, which you can use instead. If anyone's ever told you you can't, you can. I've cleaned plenty of threads with alcohol. Where did I put my scissors, man? Whatever, I don't care. You don't really need anything super special, just something that's not going to leave, like, threading <laughs> threads on your threads. Um, so this is a disposable microfiber towel. I'll actually just clean this off a tiny bit. This before we do the alcohol. And really all this is doing is it's going to get rid of some crud that's on here and just try to clean it up as much as we can before we put the new muzzle device on. So let's get some alcohol. I would normally say if you have like a little squeeze bottle that you can just drip a couple drops on there. That's good. But uh, we don't. And then if there's any little pieces of metal in there. It's going to help get those off too. So you should also do it on the inside of here. All right, so here's the part where I'm not going to do what I say you should do. So if you're putting this on and it's staying on, use Loctite. Uh, if you don't like Loctite and you like rock set, whatever, I don't care. Use a thread locker. Um, some people say to use red. Loctite. Just make sure whatever one you get, it's for the small thread, not the large thread. Um, I don't remember what that is. That I think red is 271. I don't remember if it's 271 or 272 for the small thread. Um, I personally don't like using red. Uh, it does work. It's high temp, but uh, I'll typically use blue. I am not putting Loctite on here. And the reason being is I'm going to be shooting a video when my next suppressor comes in, which should be any day now, um, of a flow-through can versus a baffled can across piston DI or piston operating systems and DI operating systems. If you don't know the difference there, uh, maybe that's a good thing to look up, the operating system of an AR. Um, now, when it comes to these Huxworks or OSS muzzle devices, at least with the flash hiders, if you don't know, OSS and Huxworks are the same company. In fact, let's take a look at this can real quick. I actually purchased an OSS can. So let me cover up the serial number because I don't care for you to see it. So that says... Huxworks, not OSS. And then down here, it says OSS. So they're the same company. They just did a rebrand. Same devices. So if you go on Silencer Shop and find a Huxworks device or an OSS suppressor's device, they're the same. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. These clearly don't have any flats up here. The only flats you get are the big nut at the back of the muzzle device. Um, so I don't have something like that that has a torque 
hole on it, so we're just going to use the crescent wrench. If you're not good at geometry, um, I'm sorry, might be a problem for you to try and do this. Uh, we want to make sure we are on the flats and not the threads, and then 20 degrees, so a quarter turn is 90 degrees, so an eighth of a turn is 45 degrees. You, you see where I'm going with this? A sixteenth of a turn is 20 degrees, so trying to guesstimate and I'm going to call that decent. Now, when you have that thread locker on there, once you get to this point and you've either done that final tighten down or used your torque wrench, you're going to let this sit for about 24 hours before you go and shoot it. Now, obviously, if you're pinning and welding this, there's uh, not a whole lot you can change up. Now, if anyone's curious about these OSS or Huxworks cans, they do sell a direct thread adapter, so you don't have to do the QD, and it just screws uh, straight into here, and you can screw it on. Now, the way they try to prevent this, like most companies, is this thread's on, right hand twist, right? This screws on left hand twist. So we would go on here and then we start turning left instead of turning right. So opposite twist and we're on. That's all. There you go. Now this presser's on, it's timed, should be good. Uh, I don't know their point of impact shift on these, especially when you're taking it off and on. If you're curious about why they do the opposite twists, so obviously, yes. If we put this on like that, we are not going to put enough force on this hand tightening to loosen our muzzle device. That would be very impressive if you did. It's possible I could because I didn't use Loctite, but I did uh, lock it down. The big deal is when I go to turn this, if it's carbon locked or anything, and I'm having to turn it the other way, chances are I could get it uh, to end up breaking the muzzle device off of the thread. Or if I have to use these flats to do it, and I'm having to crank it down this way, that's going to take the muzzle device with it. So if you get carbon lock, that's where these opposite threadings really help you. So that's that. That's it. You use your Loctite, red, blue, your rock set, whatever. Let it sit overnight, and then you're good to go have fun. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you do have any questions, just throw them in the comments. If you want to criticize or critique, feel free. Uh, sometimes they're hilarious.